Yo guys, what is going on? It is Invin here, and today what I'm going to be bringing to you guys is some of the best money-making opportunities in New World after the April update. Now, as a lot of you guys will be aware, there wasn't a huge dramatic amount of changes in terms of balance updates and in terms of, that is for weapons I should say, and in terms of changing gameplay mechanics that make certain things more valuable than others. However, a couple of things have had a small knock-on effect on certain items within the market at least on the servers in the EU and I would assume this extends to globally and some stuff that is still really popping off as a hot buy on these servers. I'm going to go over the trends, go over the patterns for you guys so you can get ahead of this and hopefully make yourself some nice cash even when there hasn't been some direct changes like I said there because these methods should still apply to everybody. Now before we jump into this entirely, if you haven't yet done so, please do go down below and drop a subscribe to the channel with the notification bell on. I do upload every single day all things I do with New World and it would be amazing to have you here as part of my channel community and if you're going to enjoy this video and find it useful please do drop me a like down below as well as it massively helps to support my content here on the channel and without further ado let's jump into it. Now the first thing that I wanted to address here then is actually tools. Now for those of you that aren't aware with this patch what they did was increase the base and the maximum gathering speeds of all of the tiers of tools up until tier 5. Now the reason that's important is because I'm going to talk about raw materials in just a second and it does mean people are going to be able to gather them generally quicker even at the lower levels in their progression. However tier 5 was unadjusted which just basically means the higher gear score you have for example like this one here is a 598 gear score. You guys can see that that gives you 845% gather speed whereas the 500 base maximum gives you a 625 and it co continuously goes all the way up there to 600 which is of course your maximum. Now the higher up gear score you get obviously the higher refining these have and you can see the really high gear score ones actually do cost a significant amount of gold and this is probably going to be the same on pretty much every server so if you are able to craft them do check the prices but they may well be worth making. However if you do go back a few pages until you start to see some tier 4s on here then you might actually be surprised that these have gone up a little bit in cash as they are a little bit more in demand with some more players coming back to the game and you know kind of wanting to get involved with the gathering now that it is a little bit quicker. Now you do have to go a fairly quite a decent way back at least on my uh, server to be actually able to see these tier 4 ones and some of them are pretty cheap to be honest and I don't think that they're going to be a skyrocket price. However, if you've got some old ones that you got given in excess by a friend that you want to sell, now may be a good time to do this, but it is not going to be a good money maker. What you are going to want to do though is try and get those higher tier towards 600 gear score tools at the tier 5 variety if you can. Now, like I said in the first bit there then, raw materials as a result of this technically should be going down on some servers because they're going to be faster to gather for pretty much everybody. And at the very bare minimum for tier 5 players, it's going to stay the same as it was before. So there's no real nerf or anything like that. There is just a lot more access to get these quicker. That being said, there is still a very high demand for pretty much every raw resource in the game. And as you can see, even green wood on my server here, if we filter the price to the cheapest ones... They are selling for 0.27 per. If you think about one tree that you do, you get like 30 odd. You're going to make a decent amount of money off this, you know, maybe maybe even 10, maybe even 8 wood, let's say, that you get per tree. As some of them are smaller, you get a little bit less. This is still going to be a very decent amount of gold if you just spend 10 minutes doing this. You can easily make upwards of five, 600 gold in a 10 to 15 minute period. So if you really are struggling, like you can see in the top right, I've been awfully lazy. So this might be a really good way for me to get some gold as well. And it is a very, very straightforward way that a lot of players can do this. And with that buff, I wanted to kind of include it in raw materials might be worth selling on your server. Again, do check the price. For example, iron ore is another really, really good one that tends to sell for a lot because people are smelting a lot. And that is 0.38 per one. And again, generally, you're getting four or five as a minimum per node. So you are going to be able to make a few gold per node. Again, 10, 15 minutes of farming this, you'll be way up there to a few hundred gold. So particularly when you're starting off with some of the other methods aren't available to you, you're either a returning player or a newer player or a end game player like myself that's been lazy on other methods this is a great way to just spend 10-15 minutes getting yourself a nice solid bit of gold per day even if it's just to buy some stuff from the faction shop 
Now the next one here is a big one and this is going to be your cut pristine gems. The reason that this has gone up so much in price and as you can see here cut pristine rubies are actually 350 gold each on my server right now. Plus of course your tax which is going to bring it up to the 370 mark. They are quite expensive. Now the main reason for this is of course that we now have double mutations available to us on the server. So if I actually go and look on my map right now you can see that I've got the tempest heart mutation which was of course released with this update. It, and that is the Hellfire one, hence why the Ruby is of a higher price. And I also have the Lazarus Instrumentality mutation on right now, which is the Eternal or the Void version. So again, the Amethyst gem is going to be up in price. And as you can see here, these ones are again 313, 314-ish and above without tax. Now the reason that these again, other than the fact that we've got the double mutations, is obviously swapping for that but then players also need to switch out if they're going to use the same pieces of gear for pvp which when you're leveling your first 625 set generally you do one that can do both things some players might some players might not either way they're probably going to be swapping gems a lot so certainly if you've got any that are on the current rotation sat away in your bank in your storage wherever it is now that you can just grab things out wherever you want to be Get them on the market, especially if you can cut them because they are going to sell for a lot. And when these mutations change, whichever element they are, if you've got the relative one or you get them as a drop as you're going around farming, like I said, with ores or whatever, then this is going to be a great way to make some cash. Especially if you're a returning player, the chances of you having these in the bank somewhere is pretty high. So do get yourself on there. Even if you can't cut them, the raw versions are still selling. For example, a pristine ruby, the uncut version, is still 75 gold. So it is much, much more worth cutting it if you can or having a friend do it for you, but even if you can't, they are still a very decent amount of gold, and actually on my server, you might just be making a profit, it depends, I'd have to work out the margins exactly, but I think you're making about a 20-30 gold profit by buying these and cutting them, so again, do keep an eye on that on your server, particularly for the ones on rotation, like I said, as they are going to be really, really crucial, and potentially even some of the PvP ones, like for example, the diamond here, as you can see, this one is upwards of 350, again, before tax, so you're looking at 370, 380, and this again is because people are swapping it out for sets be going in between mutations pvp etc and some of these are even good for pve like the diamond is really good particularly if you're healing but there is also a number of other gems that you can really get on top of so do keep your eye on the gem market as it is probably going to be pretty lucrative thanks to i know this came kind of before this update but let's say going from this update onwards it's going to be a great way to make some gold now something i've seen a lot of comments about on reddit and in the youtube comments here as well as people kind of telling me in Twitter responses that the storage chests are making them a bit of money. However, one thing to make sure that you are careful of is, of course, the price of the chest itself and then the price of the rune of holding by itself. Because even without the auric alchem and the ironwood planks, for example, here, the rune of holding is an expensive item. So you do want to make sure that you're going to be making profit. However, conversely, if you are trying to buy up these chests and your server's prices have gone down a lot, like mine have gone down a lot, now is a good time to buy it because a lot of people were making them for the storage chest buff that was received the patch before this therefore you might be able to pick up some of these excess chests that are selling for a little bit lower than what they should be and you can make a good bit of storage increase to yourself although that's strictly not a money making tip technically you can store more stuff to make the money so i kind of thought i could squeeze it in here as a little cheeky extra bonus one now, of course, without doubt, the Asmodium and the other daily craft items are always going to be up here. It's one to throw in every single time because it is super, super important. People always say, if I've left it out, why didn't you mention it? So I'm going to bring it in. Although, again, it's not strictly from this patch, a moneymaker. It is always going to be good. The brand new replica gear, which has been disabled at the time of recording this video, whilst they sort out a problem that was making it always craft at 600 gear score. Um, that's not going to be the case once it's been fixed. And obviously, you can't craft it right now. But even so people are still making it and can get it up there to a potential 600 gear score and of course these are going to be used in all the other weapons and armor and such so it is always a really really good bet to do your dailies remember that as well if you can get your hands on some of these for example the smelting set which would get you the extra asmodium it does give you a plus two percent yield when smelting so with a full set will give you a plus ten percent chance to get an extra item and this means that again you can get 11 12 13 some people have even got 14 15 or 
or even upwards on their daily craft limits instead of just the 10 that you get by default with this gear on. So it is super worth getting, but on sort of a similar strand to that, as you can see, the Smelter's Smock here or any of the Smelter's gear is still of a very high rarity and in solid demand for the Asmodium, of course. So if you do get your hands on this, which is obtained from the Tier 3 smelting trade skill aptitude caches then this is also going to net you a pretty penny as well so maybe some of the other ones like the tanners or the weavers are slightly more obtainable they're only usually a couple of thousand at most each for those and then you can get your hands on a lot of extra daily crafts so you can make yourself a nice bit of profit there and like i said if you do open a tier 3 smelting one and get your hands on this if you do want to sell it you're going to net yourself a good bit of profit there again now this one might come as a shock to some people because they haven't been getting on turn with the trend but hyssop is actually half a gold each on my server now for any of you that have ever gathered hyssop you know again you're getting three four five upwards each time that you gather it and it's very very easy to get your hands on there's loads of it i'll show you some locations in just a second here that i personally like to go for for this and basically why this is selling for a lot is because it is needed for all potions now with the brand new release of the alkest a few patches ago and this is on the rise because obviously potions are consistently something people need especially the regen ones the mana ones and the health ones and as such you're going to need 10 of these alongside some azoth water and regular water to be able to craft the infused potions but even the powerful ones so the tier 4 they still need 8 and so on and so forth reducing by 2 for each rank which means you're going to need a lot of hyssop and people basically haven't got the time or can't be bothered to go and get it so you can make a pretty penny again 10-15 minutes worth of farming on these and you can really net yourself a good bit of profit again check the prices on your server because it will be slightly different for everybody but these are really really profitable at least on my server now i said i'd show you guys some of my spots so don't go ahead and uh, steal these if you're on dry tree because i'm going to be farming them myself <laughs> um but of course there is some really really good ones first light is by far one of my favorite locations you can go down here to the settlement and simply walk up this road to the north towards the Dis day spring mills farm area here this entire area by the coast, just the, the right-hand side of the road, if you will, and going up here is entirely covered in hyssop. There's loads and loads and loads of it, and you, of course, get some of the spices as well. You will see that there is often some corrupted portals here, which you may have to take care of, but as a level 60 player with 600-plus gear score or even just 550-plus, you'll easily be able to take these out, and often there's people running around gathering it that will help you, and it's a really, really good location. Another one that I really like is the bottom southern region of Reekwater, again infested with these pesky corrupted portals and actually these ones can be a challenge to take out solo so often I'll get some friends to help me clear them. There is some nice oracalcum spots down here as well that you can gather and a lot of nice hyssop areas and the reason for this is particularly good is because the spices that drop from this area often do sell for a lot as well so it's kind of a double whammy and then this list would be a complete failure without mentioning the vast amount of hyssop that you can find in ebb and scale reach all the way up here so essentially from the town you wanted to go east up this road and then north up here you can see all along this path area here sort of towards the fast travel point all up here and down this road you're gonna find a ton of hyssop and i mean a serious serious ton it does blend in a little bit with the scenery, so maybe it's not the favourite of everybody, but there is so much there that you're going to get a lot of gold if it's worth a lot on your server. So certainly check out a few of these locations, unless, like I said, you're on Dry Tree, in which case, maybe leave them for me. Now, things like Oak Flesh Balm and Honing Stones can be good to make you money, but you do need to make sure that the materials you are using to make them are worth the while. Now, Gemstone Dust is on the same ilk as this, but I wanted to mention this one separately because a lot of players are using it, obviously, in pvp but they've now started to use it in expedition mutations a lot more to give a little bit of a bonus defense against all of the elemental attacks and it is also needed to craft the mutation tuning orb which players can do once per week as well so there is a little bit more demand for it. Again, it's a more of a niche one and you do need to check the prices on your server as well as, of course, the gemstones that you're going to put into it if there's any cheap enough. Like I said, right now they're on the rise, so maybe it's not the best time to do it, but it is an option. On some servers, it'll be profitable, so do have a look into that one as well. 
Now, as always, the craft mods are a really, really good go-to for pricing that is going to be skyrocketing if you're looking at the meta. Of course, you've still got the reinforced Oricalcum Greatax charm, which is the one that gives you the insatiable gravity well. This is all the way up here at 3.8k as a minimum on my server. And asking around in my Discord and on Twitter, YouTube comments, etc. This seems to be pretty consistently up again across the entire worldwide regions. So this is going to be a very safe bet if you have any of these saved up in your inventory and you're not going to use them, get them sold. If you get them as a drop, you're in the money. And if you are a returning player, which I know there is a lot of right now, you guys should check your storage because if you do have some of this hiding away, as you can see, you're going to make yourself a very, very nice little profit. I've got five of them, which I could sell a few to make a bit of money. But right now, I'm crafting those into axes to try and sell for even more money, which is the other option from these. But this is a really, really good one. Again, of course, the reinforced Oricalcum Warhammer Charm is another great one. Not quite as expensive, however, just shy of that by the first one that's on there. And then the listings kind of creep up to a similar price. This is, of course, the craft mod that allows you to craft an item with the Leeching Path of Destiny perk on, which again... Again, following the current meta of Bruiser Heavy and kind of Mage Heavy, this is a really, really good one. There is going to be several other craft mods again, but do check them on your individual servers. See what the prices are like and just follow the current meta weapons. See what their kind of craft mod prices are as that is going to be your best and safest bet to make some money. Preferably if you get them as drops, they're not really worth flipping because of taxes. But any drops that you get or any excess mods you have if you are a returning player or someone who's got a lot of mods saved up, do check the prices because you could be well within the money. Now if we have a look at Oricalcum Ammunition here, as you can see the price of arrows is pretty much static. Not really that worth it with the price of Oricalcum, it can be quite expensive. You might be marginally making a bit of money but after tax it's not going to be a whole lot. However, looking at the Oricalcum cartridges you can see these have soared in price from about a 1.8 1.9 all the way up to 3.0 and even with tax and the oracle prices at least on my server these are very very much worth crafting now do be aware again you will need to check the prices on your server check the price of the oracle ingots check the prices of gunpowder check the tax brackets of where you're going to sell it and work out whether it is useful a lot of players on my server have made a good profit of selling these with the blunderbusses rise to fame and its dominance in pvp right now so it could be worth your while doing and it is something that i wanted to mention in today's video as well but other than that guys that is going to be it for today's video i do hope you've all enjoyed and hopefully some of you can make some good money off these tips and tricks that i've given like i said nothing specifically that's been directly impacted by the most recent change as it was just mostly balances quality of life bug fixing etc but there has been some knock-on effects and you know like i said some of the updates that have come around this like the jumble mutations for example have sent the prices of gems skyrocketing so there's a few things that I wanted to bring to your attention and hopefully, like I say, do check the prices on your individual servers before going through with any of these methods. But hopefully it does point you in the right direction to make some nice gold if you do want to and of course if you're not already at gold cap. But other than that, that is going to be it for today's video. So do make sure if you've enjoyed that you drop me a like and a subscribe down below as both of those things massively help to support me and my content here on the channel. If you do want to go above and beyond and support me directly as a creator here on YouTube, you can join my channel's membership program which is down below via the join button but of course that is never required and other than that that is going to be it for today's video so i'd like to thank you all for watching thank you for your time and i will be back with you again very very shortly with another upload take care guys and peace